Okay, this will be a very short lesson uh, on uh, things that you can do once you have multiple variable linear regression. Uh, you can actually begin to uh, build models using regression techniques that involve variables in a nonlinear way, uh, build in interactions between variables, quadratic terms, uh, uh, higher order terms, etc., using linear regression. So, um, so this is basically um, a little illustration that shows. This is from Montgomery and Runger. Uh, it shows um, two variables, x1 and x2, and what you can see here is that the effect of variable x1 uh, depends on where you are along the x2 axis, right? So the slope in x1, if you will, depends on, on variable x2. And that, that um, characteristic of a model uh, emerges from terms like this, where you have a beta 3 x1, x2 term in addition to the usual linear terms. You've got an intercept, uh, you know, factor effect of, of x1 and an effect of x2, uh, but there's also an effect of the interaction between these two things. And so this is something that, uh, that you can actually include in a regression model. You can just treat this as though it's another variable, and this becomes a, another coefficient to be fit in a least square sense uh, using the uh, techniques of linear regression. Nothing really changes here except that you include an extra column of data that is the product of x1 and x2. All right, so similar, similarly, we can study things that look uh, sort of like this, um, quite useful for optimization. Uh, when you have data points that have some noise in them, uh, you can think about including your normal, um, your normal linear model as a function of uh, x1 and x2, but also including quadratic terms in both of those variables, x1 and x2 squared. Uh, and also these interaction terms. Okay, so um, so those are, are things that uh, that come up quite a bit. Um, for example, if you open Excel, uh, it will ask you whether you want to make a, a linear fit or a polynomial fit, and it is adding terms up to the level of polynomial that you request in a single variable. Okay, so um, so this is uh, an example of that for a quadratic polynomial. So you can think about fitting uh, y as a function of an intercept. Uh, a slope in x and a quadratic term in x uh, with some residual error. Uh, so if you have a data set that looks something like this, uh, you can go through and use multivariable linear regression uh, with, um, with your second variable just being this x squared. Okay, so um, ANOVA uh, analysis of variance is also an important topic in multivariable linear regression. Uh, you know, it is, it is useful to think of the number of uh, variables in this case is being related to the number of these coefficients k uh, because obviously if you're making polynomial fits you really only have one variable x but it may appear to uh, increasingly high orders depending on the on the degree of polynomial that you want okay so as with uh, the standard ANOVA that we did for single variable linear regression uh, we make a null hypothesis. The standard null hypothesis in multivariable linear regression is that none of the variables are important, which is to say that uh, beta 1, beta 2, through beta k are all simultaneously zero, right? And this is uh, the, um, the F test uh, that you construct for that. You have your sum of the square, um, sum of the square um, uh, residuals. You have, um, you have this uh, regression sum of squares is, is this thing. You have uh, beta transpose uh, your data matrix transposed into y and this is your n times your sample average right so this guy is in the numerator you're dividing by k here uh, because there are k uh, coefficients being fit and then the uh, sum of square errors term gets divided by uh, the number of degrees of freedom that you have left uh, in your data set so there were n data points and there were k plus one coefficients here uh, including the beta zero is one of those coefficients uh, so, so that is the uh, the variable uh, that you construct from uh, for for using in this F test, and and then you look up and you compare that to your uh, your Fisher um, your Fisher test variable. That'll give you um, you know for a for a fit with k values and number of degrees of freedom n minus k minus one, um, you will have a value that a p value that corresponds to this uh, particular F statistic. And, and that tells you, you know, what is the, what is the confidence uh, with which you could reject this uh, null hypothesis that none of the variables that you tested are important. Now, now quite often, uh, so this p-value for this particular test is going to be extremely small if any one of the variables that you're, that you're modeling uh, in, your, in your model of y uh, are important in determining y, right? So 
Uh, quite often we want to know the answer to a different question. We want to know specifically is variable x2 important or not, right? Uh, and suppose that we know that variable x1 is important, then what we might do is first go through and make the multivariable model uh, and then subtract away the beta1 component, uh, beta1 x1 component of that model, right? So you have y equals uh, beta1 x1 plus beta2 x2 plus some residual, right? Uh, now I can take the y minus the beta1 x1, uh, construct a, a new effective column um, of, uh, of data. So this effectively takes the role now of y. And I just look at how a linear regression of that new variable versus x2 would behave. And, and then apply my ANOVA methods that we learned in standard linear regression uh, to this relationship between y uh, the new y, the shifted y, where I've removed the effects of x1, and uh, variable x2. And that allows me to assign a p-value to the importance of variable x2. Um, so that's something that you know is, is useful to keep in mind, uh, that we can, we can really go through systematically and test the importance of variables, of specific variables in our models. Um, so with that, I think the, the next thing, uh, the next topic is design of experiments, and so I will stop here.